Hi, my name is Andy. I'm from Hillborn Fuel Injection. Thank you for joining us today for our second video on how to tune your Hillborn injector. Today we will be detailing the use of a synchrometer to fine tune your butterflies. For EFI applications, this is a really important adjustment because not only does it tighten up your throttle response, it also gives you the part throttle drivability that you expect, and more importantly, or most importantly, the exhaust note that you want. Now, for mechanical systems, race-only systems, the use of spectrometer to fine-tune the butterflies can be advantageous because it keeps all of the cylinder temperatures even when you get off the throttle. Now, before we actually get into the use of, of the synchrometer, there's a couple things we have to do first. The most important thing is to make sure that the engine is at operating temperature and that the injector manifold has expanded as much as it's going to. The next thing we'll need to do is go back and do our initial butterfly adjustments, which are, are detailed in the previous video. And thirdly, uh, on a particular application such as the big block Chevrolet, where we use a pinch clamp to hold the ram tubes in, we will need to tape off the inside of the pinch clamp to ensure that we don't have any leaks to give us a bad reading on the synchrometer. So if you're ready to go, let's get into it. Okay, you can see we've gone ahead and taped off the inside of the pinch clamp slit and over the top where it slid for the pinch clamp also. This ensures that we will get a good reading at the synchrometer. The engine is at its operating temperature and the uh, idle speed has been correctly set to where we want the idle speed. Next thing to notice is that the synchrometer is graduated from 1 to 30. 1 to 10 will offer our best resolution. So therefore, we will adjust the vent here in the synchrometer to try and get our resolution in that area. So now that we're ready to go, let's go ahead and fire it up and see what we have. Okay, as you can see from this chart here, how far off we really are. You can see we're averaging around four on the pass or driver side. Pardon me, cylinders one through seven, while cylinders two uh, through six on the passenger side are really nicely grouped at around six. Uh, the question is, how close do we really need to get this? Uh, and a grouping like this is very, very nice, and uh, we can even make six as perfect as as the rest of those in order to get them where, where, right where they need to be. But obviously the discrepancy between driver side and passenger side is very obvious. So how do we go ahead and fix this problem? Well, very simply, we're going to use a technique that involves the hex link and um, uh, preloading the butterflies closed in order to go ahead and even out these, these numbers. So uh, I will show you that technique right now. Okay, we are ready to go ahead and do our preload adjustment technique to go ahead and get our sides balanced. The first thing we're going to need to do is to remove our throttle linkage, our return spring, and back off our idle stops. This will allow the butterflies to shut all the way. We are then going to go ahead and loosen the gold arm on the side of the engine that has low flow. That happens to be the driver's side. That way what we're going to be able to do is to use the gold arm as leverage over here to preload the high side of the engine or the passenger side to go ahead and shut a little bit further than the driver side. So when we tighten up the hex link or the gold arm for this hex link, it will lift the passenger side up just a little bit more and balance them out. Now this is a finesse adjustment and may require a couple of shots at it, but um, Let's see how we did on this one. Okay, now you can really start to see the results of using our preload technique. It took me three attempts and very light pressure to get it to the point where it's at right here. Um, not only are the numbers really starting to even out, 
you can really start to hear the exhaust pop. It sounds fantastic. But now we're starting to see a little bit of a, a slight discrepancy on our uh, passenger side, cylinder two through eight, where the front two cylinders are slightly higher than the rear two cylinders. Keeping in mind that we do have a coupler that separates these two sets of cylinders, we're gonna do a very quick adjustment and manipulate that coupler by grabbing the two inner butterflies and in this case we're going to try and close this side and lightly open this side in order to go ahead and balance out those two sets of butterflies. Once again requires just a little bit of, of pressure, not a whole lot, and um, we're going to give it a shot and see well, how much closer we can get it. Okay, and here you see the outcome of our adjustment of our coupler. As you can see, cylinders two through, two through eight are very, very even. And once again, the technique applied for adjusting the coupler is to very simply go ahead and grab the two center butterflies, uh, four and six in this case, and what we did is slightly manipulate number four close to reduce air and number six open to increase the airflow. Once again, very little pressure is required in order to come up to this final number. Unfortunately, uh, what happens is when you make a change, sometimes it changes something else. In this particular case, we did have to go back and reset our side to side, um, but that's what happens. All right, uh, last but not least, we're gonna attack cylinder number seven, and we're just gonna make a single butterfly change, which will require removal of the butterfly. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, mark the butterfly because butterflies have a bevel and uh, we're going to put it in a vise and, and uh, manipulate it in the vise and then put it back in the board. We've marked the butterfly, removed it from the bore, and now we're ready to go ahead and make our adjustments. Um, as a side note, if you ever find yourself getting crossed up as to which way the butterfly goes back into the bore, just keep in mind that the edge of the butterfly here is beveled and the bevel of the butterfly always rests against the side of the bore. Before we get started we need to go ahead and put jaw protectors on our vise and then we can go ahead and slide the butterfly in. Take note of the two witness marks for the butterfly shaft. We're going to slide past the first one until we cover the second witness mark. We'll go ahead and tighten up our vise this particular adjustment we can either use to increase or decrease air depending on uh, what our synchrometer is telling us for this particular cylinder. In this case we need to go ahead and open up the butterfly and supply a little bit more air to match the rest of the other cylinders. Uh, these butterflies are very tough and it's very hard to manipulate them by hand so I will recommend the use of a rubber or plastic mallet. Now we only need to move them a couple thousandths of an inch for our first attempt to see how we've done so a little, dab, a little dab will do you. So in this particular case, we're going to open up the butterfly, just a couple thousandths. And we'll now remove the butterfly from the vise, install it into the engine, check the synchrometer, and see if we need to make any other adjustments. Much like the rest of the adjustments that we have been doing, you may need to do this more than once. Well, it took a couple of tries, but it looks like we nailed it. All of our hard work uh, has rewarded us with the exceptional throttle response, a fantastic exhaust note, and the best possible part throttle drivability. Obviously, the more time you spend on it, the closer it will be, and there is a chance you'll have to go back and touch up some of your adjustments before you move on to the next uh, adjustment, much like we had to do with a couple of our adjustments on this particular engine. One of the nice things about knowing that you're uh, engine side to side is exactly the same is that if you're tuning with an O2 sensor and you only have one you'll uh, you'll feel confident knowing that your adjustments are the same uh, on both sides of the engine. So uh, once again uh, with a little bit of hard work we have ourselves a finely tuned Hillborn fuel injection system. Well that concludes our tutorial on how to adjust your Hillborn injector. If you have any questions please let us know or if you'd like to visit us on the web, please do at hillborninjection.com. And from all of us at Hillborn Fuel Injection, thank you very much.